from town to town with a horse trailer dragging behind. Just a cowboy lost in a modern world, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Not a day goes by, I don't think about how my life used to be. Now I'm out of my prime and I'm losing time and nobody's calling for me. Call my name, come round up time, now the four-wheeler takes my place And the cowboy life that I've always loved is getting lost without a trace But I won't give up and I won't give in, I'm a cowboy till I die And I know there's got to be a place for me underneath big western sky Headed out west, gonna do my best to leave the civilized world behind Just me, my saddle, and an honest horse will try to go back in time Where surely there'd be a warm campfire or a bunkhouse calling my name But tonight I'll sleep in my pickup truck cause I'm still not playing their game world may turn, but the thing that can't change is the way I feel inside. A prairie fire may burn itself out, but you can't snuff a cowboy's pride. I'll be what I am, and I'll do what I do. This life is worth fighting for. Yeah, the cowboy life is a life for me, for me and 10,000 more. The cowboy life is a life for And paranoid. Welcome back, true to horse horsemanship. We got Charlie in here with a mare, a smoking lady, and somebody asked me when I was talking about the Tennessee horse fair in the ring. Charlie did everything I asked him. It wasn't a hundred percent, but it was probably about ninety-five percent or better. Now, when he was outside, because the way Charlie stalled and the way the saws are, he couldn't see what was going on. So he got a little uppity, but not really that bad. Nothing I can, you know, he wasn't unmanageable. So what I said on Facebook that I'll start using him to work other horses. And this is smoking lady. If I was probably 50 years old, I'd be riding her. But she saddles, she gets to the bit. She just gets a little squirrely when I'm above her. So I'm going to teach Charlie how to work other horses. And plus, at some point, get close to her. And... Now, should everybody do this? No, Every, a lot of people shouldn't even handle a stud. And, you know, I'm gonna say it point blank. If Ray handled a stud by himself, it wouldn't work. So, I wanna go to steps I started with Charlie. First thing I did with Charlie, I'm just gonna walk him around that mare. Now, if he talked, or got chargy, I'd just spin him, back him up or something. Like right there, he started looking at her. I don't mind him looking at her, but he's not allowed to even talk or bow up. 
like right there. But I'm going to take con control of Charlie's feet and I'm not going to And I really putting Charlie and me to the test the smoking ladies in season. And Charlie knows that. So I'm just gonna track her a little bit. Right there, she looks at me just as if I would if I was working her. Not working Charlie and we'll walk away from her. Now usually if I'm teaching a horse to track, I'll keep one eye on him. But in Charlie's case, he's a stud, she's in season. This is about the fourth or fifth time we've done this with her. I want to keep his nose tipped out just a little bit. And some people say, well, you're grabbing him off of hard at times. You're damn right I am. I want to tell him, since he's a stud, loud and clear that he doesn't get to go forward. Right there, she's looking at me. I'm going to walk away. And this is the way I'm introducing Charlie to how to work other horses. Without, you know, I got some distance where I get out of the way. I want. Now there was other steps that we did, like her and another one. I rode Charlie in the round pen. I mean, the arena with him. So we're just going to, like I say, track her. My objectives get keep Charlie quiet. That's why I'm not cantered, letting his feet really move quick. Except maybe at a trot. I like doing this with all horses, actually. I like a thinking horse. You know, while I'm letting him track her. There we go, that was better. That time when Charlie tracked her, he lowered his head, and that's what I'm looking for. But I was saying, we had a well-bred quarter horse in there is bred for cutting and the way he was trained the horse couldn't think on his own he was waiting for the me to tell it what to do in this instance I don't want to tell him what to do after a point and it looks like I'm not doing nothing but this is the best I can do with Charlie. Right there, she's looking at me, so I'm gonna walk away for a little bit. Now, when I walk away, I'm really anal about it. If she's facing that way, I'm gonna walk that way. Because number one, I like to see that pull her to follow me. And if I turn into her, 
while she's looking that way. She's gonna move off automatically. There we go. And as Charlie relaxes, I'm going to start asking more and more of them. Now right there you saw Charlie get a little uppity when she started cantering. But I wouldn't let him because right now that would be a bad thing to do. Because it's just Charlie would get amped up. And my job is to teach him to relax when working other horses. Right there, she's looking. I'm going to walk away. And when I ride by her, there we go. So this is the first steps I do with a stud. Well, actually, it's be about third step because I done got him used to riding around mares and all in the arena. Good boy. All right now, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just letting Charlie track her. I'm letting him think on his own. He's soft. There we go. Like this is more for Charlie's sake than smoking Lady's sake. Right now, I got a 15 foot lead on smoking Lady. Uh, before, when I first did this with her and him, I started out with my 30 foot lead so I keep my distance from her a little bit with Charlie. So that way Charlie got steady. Now he knows I'm gonna try to ride Charlie as loose as possible. Because the more I grab his face, he's gonna start reacting to that. I mean, find an example was that was, I had Ray do this the other day. And Ray was unsure of himself and grabbed hold of Charlie, and Charlie was just getting more amped up. So finally I took Charlie away from Ray. I mean, this is one of the best things I do with Charlie. And like I said, smoking lady, she'll... I mean, this is the next process in her training. Now, notice I'm always going to give myself a way out. You know, what Charlie knows he's got a way out. I want her to know she's got a way out. One foot. Good. 
you know this is a fine instance when to bring up when you're working horses she's been doing great Charlie's been doing great but now we had a different factor to it that she's coming in season but I'm not going to take Charlie away from her it's, he's got to learn no matter if mare's in season or not if I'm handling him he's got to be this way dead quiet and it looks like I'm pretty laxy daisy but trust me I'm ready to spring into action any minute <laughs> you know so many people when they do have studs they hide them and all you do is create a lunatic don't you get it <laughs> if, if you watch her body language the reason I know her coming in season every time Charlie gets close to that hind end that tail is going up and I think Cindy would get me if we had a baby next year <laughs> And right then wasn't the time to correct Charlie. If I had to, I would have let her go and did a big correction. So now I'm going to be a little bit more prepared. There. See, I'm not going to pick at Charlie either. Oh, come here. Like I said, we're going to get in more detail with the uh, little one and her to get that final step done so I can start riding my mare. I saw her do a cutting horse move the other day. Oh. Now, it's, he's a stud, honey. Yeah, Cindy's telling me off camera that he's dropping. Well, you know, I am working a stud, so it's going to happen. This is what I'm caring about, about from his pole to his tail croup. Because I don't feel a nervous horse under me. He's relaxed. Like I said, Smoky Joe and Brave Eagle both, you know, I've worked a lot of horses with both of them. And if I'm in that saddle, I could park them right next to a mare and they can be squirting all over the place. They won't drop or anything. Now, nice, right now I got three other different personality horses I'll work with Charlie with. I got Lily who, who's going to challenge Charlie and then you're going to see me go out with it. I'll have a probably whip of my hand for Lily, not Charlie. And you got a little bit more what do you call Belle, hon? She's not aggressive. More opinionated or survivor. Hyper? Survivor. Mustang. Oh, her survival. Yeah, Belle is in more of survivor mode in some instance. Or she might kick out more so than then we got a nice little mare that I need to start getting videos so I get her adoption I've been working with. Hell she's already grew a hand since she's been here. 
I noticed that yesterday when I turned her out. But um, now she's going to be a horse that's going to be in our back pocket. So I got different horses, different personalities that I'd be able to work Charlie with. I started out with Smoking Lady because I know her. Me and Cindy both have seen her in full flight mode, but she won't hurt herself. You would think she wouldn't be thinking, but she she does, even in full flight mode. So I know Smoking Lady, when I first started this, She's going to get out of my way. She's not going to kick at Charlie because I need to build Charlie's confidence up before we start working them kind of horses. And we notice as I go on, I'm pushing, bringing her up closer and closer to me from behind. Now, any instance, I don't care if you're working with Gildan doing this or Mare doing this, any horse, they're not allowed to touch noses because it's liable to fall apart. Now, I learned that at eight years old when I was riding Dusty, who was a stud. One of the kids I used to ride with, I warned them, warned them, said, don't let your horse touch the nose of mine, pony. Sure enough, he did. Now this is, looks simple, but you gotta realize, I've been handling studs since I was eight years old. So I know how to, you know, I know my signs, like even right now she picked up that tail more, but I didn't grab Charlie. I just let him walk out. So this is one of the instances. I'm getting more control by less control. Because like I said earlier, if I start really hanging on Charlie's mouth, that energy that he had to build up, even though it might not look like he had any, is because of the way I rode him. If I rode him different, I let that energy dissipate through his body. I didn't just hold it back. And that's what you're doing. The more you hold on to the horse like that, that energy's got to go somewhere. And this is like a relief valve. I ride them as loose as I possibly can. And like I said earlier, I'm ready if I have to grab like I did. I moved that hip there for a while. Which that was another thing I learned through Dusty as a eight year old. And there's a new thing I got I'm excited about. It's a I got a podcast going on speaker.com and plus I'm on iHeartRadio called True to Horse. I've only got four up now, three or four, but it's talking about horses and at times life in general. And I'm going to do everything possible to keep out politics out of it. Now, I might get into horse politics, but as far as what's going on right now, no, true to horse, these, all my true to horse videos, my podcast is going to be somewhere where y'all can just relax and think about something else. So this, this is a great place to stop. I got a relaxed mare that's in season behind me. Charlie's sitting here relaxed. Looking at a little one right now, but that's his buddy. So as I always say, be true to a horse, they'll be true to you.
just like I was with Charlie here doing all this. First and foremost, I'm going to get back on that bandwagon again. I got away from it. Be true to yourself. And personal experience, you damn right. Sometimes it's hard as hell. But just try to be. I mean, the more you try, the better it is. And something else Cindy brought up real quick. I used to have a thing about, she'd ask me a question. I said, well, you got to think about your intent. And that's the biggest thing, no matter if you're working horses or through life, is what's your intent? Like my intent was to get Charlie relaxed with smoking lady and get her relaxed. I got both of them relaxed. Fine. Did I do this to show off and what oh, good a horseman I am? No. My intent was to give y'all some some information that you use at home. I'm 68 years old. I don't really my ego. I've had so many knockdowns that it's not much. Cindy's over there looking at me. Anyway, so as I say, be true to a horse. They'll be true to you. God bless and take care.